Hey, this is Joe Rutaski. I'm here by myself again because this is a, another hurricane evacuation video. So we're going to look at composing and decomposing fractions and mixed numbers. Before you watch the video, go ahead and complete this first task. You can pause the video here. Um, talk about this video either by yourself, with a partner, or your team, and just kind of look at these two tasks and how you can use these fraction strips to tackle these tasks. All right, welcome back. Hopefully you saw that with these tasks, um, if we had students working on these, um, the twelfths on the left, that they could see that there are numerous ways we can come up with different add-ends to make ten twelfths. Hopefully we could connect this back to what students did all the way back in kindergarten, where we learned that we can strategically decompose and compose whole numbers in different ways, such as different ways to make 10. Um, we can do that also with fractions. So we just want students to know that all those strategies, properties that they have used with whole numbers still can apply with fractions. Let's take a look at fractions, the progression of fractions with the best standards. So we see in third grade that gray, students learned that we all fractions are composed of unit fractions. And a unit fraction is just one of whatever the denominator is. So three fourths can be made of one fourth, one fourth, and one fourth, literally having three one fourths. We're gonna apply that to decompose fractions and mixed numbers in different ways. And it's always going to be working with the same denominator in fourth grade. Later, they will apply that to add and subtract fractions with denominators and including with mixed numbers and moving into more of a procedural reliability. And of course, in fifth grade, they will use different denominators. So for right now in this unit in fourth grade, really this benchmark can be thought of as an exploration benchmark. Um, we're not wanting kids to have that fluency yet. That Procedural reliability is going to come in the following units as they work on adding and subtracting fractions. Right now, we just want them to use models, use manipulatives to really discover what it means that, oh, just like I could break up the number eight in different ways, I can break up the fraction eight fifths into different ways as well. In third, we hope that students had a lot of experience uh, modeling different fractions in different ways. Um, really, they the focus was, like we said, focusing on the unit fractions. So not just fractions less than one, but even fractions greater than one, such as we have here, eight fifths can actually be thought of as eight one fifth pieces. In fourth grade, we're gonna want them to branch out a little bit and not only use those unit fractions, but all, also cluster them into different unit fractions. So students can start to think of this as um, creating groups of fraction tiles, fraction circles, whatever fraction manipulative they are used to. They can start by breaking it up into unit fractions and then challenge them to think of different ways they can decompose these fractions. So perhaps they're thinking with holes. Um, this is another way that we can reiterate fractions that are equal to a whole. So perhaps they recognize five fifths. That's equal to a whole, and I can break off those three-fifths, and we would just write it as five-fifths plus three-fifths. Maybe we're using fraction circles. Here we can work with nine-fourths. We can think of it as all the unit fractions, nine groups of one-fourth. Perhaps another student might think of it as halves, relating to halves, or sections of two-fourths, 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 and seeing we have an extra one-fourth at the end. Or again, um, reiterating those holes. So kids like to just make those holes, see how many it'll take. It's good for them to have that practice. We could think of this as four fourths, four fourths, and one fourth. And of course, um, once we use those concrete manipulatives, we want to draw pictures, and perhaps we can do that right next to it. So one student might have the fraction tiles out while another student's drawing those representations as they work in pairs to explore. Think about all the different ways they can do it. You know, challenge them, how many different ways can you decompose eight fifths. Maybe they could think of it as five fifths and three fifths. Perhaps they could break up those three fifths into unit fractions, but still keep that whole five fifths. Or maybe they're using their doubles fact of eight. I know eight can be thought of as four and four. Same thing, eight fifths can be thought of as four fifths and four fifths. 
jumping back into those nine fourths. And I just kept the same fraction with the same type of model here. Um, circle models are useful depending on the types of fract the denominators they're using. Obviously, if we're doing something like sevenths, twelfths, it starts to get a lot more difficult. But for halves, fourths, things like that, they could still use those circle fractions. Um, relating, starting to relate to maybe when they have to multiply with fractions and later divide with fractions. So we could think of nine can be thought of as three groups of three. Nine fourths can be thought of as three groups of three fourths. A lot of kids are going to jump to seeing that multiplication. That's fine. Do not skip out on using number lines. Number lines are uh, with fractions are very, very helpful. This can definitely help students as they're working with their operations with fractions later, even multiplying with fractions. So we're going back to the eight fifths, thinking of as five fifths is that jump to the whole, and then how many more do we need? Another three fifths jump. Coming back to our fourths, here's that connection to one, two, three, four fourths is one. Whole, another four fourths gets to our second hole. We've made two holes and eight fourths. We need one more fourth. So four fourths plus four fourths plus one fourth is the same as nine fourths. Many, many different models that students can use. Um, any possible misconceptions students are having is that traditionally when students were adding fractions, they will often add the digits in the denominator as well. So hopefully, you know, when students get to that down the road, their experience right now working with this benchmark is that they're recognizing I can decompose these fractions, even though I broke apart three fourths, for example, here in this bullet. All of my fractions have that same denominator. They're all still fourths. I'm breaking up fourths and I'm still getting fourths. So when I add those fourths back together, when I recompose them, I'm still having fourths. We want them to have a lot of that experience so that they're not making those mistakes later on when they add and subtract with fractions. Here's our CRA island. Remember, this, these, all of these things should be happening together, that students are building what they can touch and move around to then represent what those would look like with pictures and right alongside it, always writing that abstract representation so that they're connecting them all together in their brains. So, Thanks. I hope you found this helpful. Um, make sure we're using all those different types of models for students as they explore composing and decomposing fractions.